Welcome to Blindfold Chess number one. This is a series of videos I wanted to start a long time ago and finally I made it work technically, so I'm very excited to introduce it to the channel. In this series of videos, I'm going to play a game, Blindfolded, also known as just not being able to look at the pieces. What does that mean? That means that I'm going to be staring at a blank board without being able to look at the pawns, knights, bishops of any color, white and black, and you the viewer will get to see how I visualize the board in my head. It should be fun. So let's dive into it. Okay, we found the game. Let's just make sure everything's fine. Everything's fine. Perfect. Let's go. I'm going to open up with e4. Um, our opponent is going to go for the French defense. We're playing 5 plus 5. So we have 5 minutes we have five minutes plus 5 seconds each move. Uh, I'm going to play pawn to d4. Pawn to d5. And in this position, I have many ways of playing. e takes d5 is one way. e5 is probably the most challenging one nowadays. Knight d2, knight c3. I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for knight c3. My nor my normal way of like visualizing is because I, well, I should start first things first. The way I visualize, I start visualizing or practicing visualization is by knowing the board. So I I was familiar. I got familiar with the board before I could start playing blindfold chess. Um. Now this line is interesting. Yeah. My opponent gonna take with the G pawn. Oh, with queen. Interesting. Um, I I get familiar with the board first, and afterwards I I can start uh, practicing maybe some opening lines, maybe looking at e4, e5, knight f3. Eventually, you will be able to play a game, uh, blindfolded without looking at the pieces. Um, and then once once you are blindfold blindfolded like this, believe it or not, sometimes you want to look away while playing your chess games over the board. You want to look away. And uh, try to just imagine the board in your head. Why would you do that? Because in your in your head, the board is is always the same, right? Not not the same as as when you're playing, let's say, uh, in a pub or in in a bar, and then and the lighting maybe is different or the pieces are different. All these little details may affect your chess. So if you are always looking at the board from your head, there's always one same image in your head, right? Because it's your head. Um. Yeah, so h6, going back to the position, my opponent plays this French defense, took on, on e4, I took on f6, queen takes f6, g takes f6 is very interesting, and after this h6. Interesting, so I'm, I'm planning to, I mean, I can play just normal with c3, but this is, I've seen this being played by Abdus Satorov, I think, or was it Kramnik? I think it was Abdus Satorov. Does g3, bishop g2 make sense here? I don't think so. I think, I think I want to generally just go for normal, normal play with bishop d3. At least that's my first instinct. So I'm gonna go bishop d3, bishop b4, c3, knight c6, c3, c5, probably c3 as well. There's also castle c takes d4, knight takes d4 with the trick of bishop b5. I think I'll do that not because of the trick, but because I want to castle either way. If c takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, bishop b5, of course, is there. Or maybe I'm just failing. I, when when I was trying to record this video for the first time, I I blundered my well, I blundered a knight. Uh, so it would be it would be it wouldn't be out of the question. Um, but either way, I have a good piece play in the center. Bishop d7 by my opponent, of course. Now this is a real threat, so I have bishop e3 maybe. Um, knight f3 back is not not crazy. C3 supporting the knight is a good idea as well. I think I'll go for knight f3 because after knight c6 I don't want to trade the pieces on c6. I feel like that's that's benefiting. Um that's beneficial, sorry. Uh for black. I can play knight f3 against knight c6, maybe queen e2. And in this structure, I think that white is just hoping for a slight advantage. Maybe c3, bishop c2, maybe rook d1, bishop e3. Black's structure is a little bit more passive. That's what I can argue. That being said, if I, I mean, it's very difficult to to break through Black's uh, Black's piece uh, or or structure in general. The c6 one, probably e5 is something desired by Black. Not now because Black is not developed fully. But for example, Bishop d6 castles maybe e5 is something that Black wants to start thinking about. Um, there's still a pawn on e6, there's a pawn on h6. 
So for example, if I play Queen E4, that's a disgusting cheapo. Because after castles, Queen H7 is just mate, of course. You should not play for cheapos. You should play for normal, good, objective chess. <laughs> um, I think I'll go for C3. Already dangerous, because I thought that, in my mind, for some reason, maybe the pawn was already on C3. So um, I have to focus a little bit more. My goodness. Is that longside castling? Okay, longside castling by black. Very risky. Uh, bishop on d7, bishop on d6, knight on c6, rook on d8, rook on h8, knight of queen, queen on f6. Uh, bishop on d3, bishop on c1, knight on f3. Let's see. It seems like this is a little bit risky, but of course black wants to go e5 or g5. Very interesting, very interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go b4. The character of the position has changed dr dramatically. Uh, it's no longer going to be a game of, um, of of slow maneuvering or maybe just improving your piece pieces little by little and your position little by little. Now this is going to be very sharp. And this is something that many people forget to do when, when you're playing chess. It's actually pretty drastic. When these things happen, you have to be very quick and, and change, switch your gears as quickly as possible. So I'm going to go bishop e3, I think. 95 is a little bit annoying. Maybe rook e1 is worth a little bit of my time. Um, bishop e3, though, seems more natural. I've, I prepared b4. Maybe knight e5 is, is prevented in its own little way. Knight takes e5. Knight. I don't like that, actually. Knight takes e5, queen takes e5. I have to play some like g3. Or f4, I guess. But this is a very quick game all of a sudden. Knight, king b8 happened. Um, I still have the position pretty well, but I'm running out of time, which is a little bit worrying. I have a bishop on d3, queen on e2. If I go b4, queen takes c3, I'm not worried, because I, I want to open lines towards the king. b4, knight e5, I'm a little bit worried. I want to, like, I want, somehow I want to play in the center rather than the, the, this. Because I think my opponent's attack or, or counterplay, or pawn storm, I should say, is quicker than mine. So I'm going to go for... Uh, a reaction in the center. So 95 happened. As, 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 as discussed. I think I can go for bishop e4. I don't want to take on f e5 after queen takes e5. There's checkmate on h2. And at least now I have maybe. Maybe some. Uh, maybe some queen b5 ideas. If queen e5. Um, if queen e5. Do I have. I don't have a cheapo. I don't have bishop takes a seven. If rook takes d6, rook takes d6. Wait, uh, I know there's there's. This is interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go g3 then. My bishop is on f3. I prevent the mate on h2, and at the same time, I kind of get ready for a little cheapo. Um. Okay, I'll go for a4. Why not? Sorry, b4. It's getting a little bit, getting a little bit uh, tactical. Huh. Okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna be very tactical. I'm gonna sacrifice the exchange. Queen takes d6, rook d1. I'm running out of time, so I have to do something dramatic, drastic, I should say. This bishop d4. It doesn't work. Hmm. I'm trying. I'm trying to focus here. What? What? What, what was that? A queen? Yeah, that was a queen. That's an interesting move. How do I make things complicated? I think I'll take. I don't want to take though. Yeah, I should have. I should have managed my time better. <laughs> Classic, a classic for the channel. Okay, I'll, I'll take, I'll take it. I'm gonna play rook d6. There's a bishop on d7, right? So, uh, I'm starting to lose the position a little bit. A little bit. I have a pawn on a2. It's tough. Um, I'm, 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 I'm touching this pawn on e6. So, for example, rook g 8 would be maybe useful, but I'm gonna take on a6. Okay, I'm gonna take on. E ah, what? I know. Oh, sorry, my bishop is on f3, so it's guarding. 
Ah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's a good move. Okay, let me play bishop e2. Oh no, my bishop. A little bit of a cheapo, that one, but I don't see anything else. If bishop takes e2, bishop f4, check. Hope this is a cheapo, actually. Maybe this is not working. Okay, it is working. So should I give a check on e7? That's the question. I don't think so. Let's take rook h8 and then time to cry. Hmm. Can I hold this? That's the question. Probably not. King b6, a4. Okay, that. a4 either way. Maybe I can hold this. And I'm, I'm worried about a5. Although bishop a3 is there. Interesting game. Of course, I could have played much better before. But, uh... But uh, life is difficult. Bishop b3. b4, b5 is there. Um, uh, I'm, I'm focusing, guys. I'm focusing. Give me, give me a second. Okay. King e2 now. King d5. I'm getting king d3. So not easy. And actually, believe it or not, like, I, I'm, I'm just down a... a, a, a up uh, one point so sure i'm down the exchange and maybe black black can pose trouble here maybe even even more so with this h4 move but in, in a very well prepared way i think but if king d5 for example king d3 i don't see a clear way d4 is coming and all of a sudden maybe actually even black has to be a little bit careful with 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 my counterplay i can trade Normally, trading pawns is a good idea when you're, um... Trading pawns is a good idea when you're, um... When you're down material. But now this rook has to be... For example, I think my opponent wanted me to play bishop c5. To which, actually, maybe I'm winning. Nah, I'm, there's no way. Okay, king, rook h7, c4. Let's go b5. And very important, I think. Take with the A pawn. So we can create more nastiness. Let me go here. I want to go king d4 and bishop f4. King e5. Then um, I'm also pretty happy. Okay, let me take on h with the h pawn, sorry. Yeah, this is this is being misplayed by my by my opponent. I'm going to play bishop f4. Bishop f4, bishop e5. Yeah, so c5 there also. Very attractive. Check, king d5. If king e6... Well, that one, that one... That one I come here, right? Rook d7, king e6. I'm invading. I have opponent f2 defending my bishop. Okay, that... I suspect this is getting into draw drawish territory. But of course I don't want to draw. By now I just... yeah, Check, c6. Tree. What if I go king d6? Rook d4, king e6. Now it's not... Not easy. Sorry if I'm not... Um, Trying to visualize as, as well as, mu as as possible. Okay, that one. Oof, that one smells a little bit suspicious. B6. I can take as well, right? I can play C6 first. Check. King here. I can give a check. Ah, no, I can't. Uh, let's let's give this. Let's take. If Rook D4, King E6. That one I didn't see, but I have Bishop E3, right? I have this and bishop e3. And b7 is not possible. And if king takes a6, king e6. And I start taking these guys. Yeah. Sensible. Ah, that's a good move. 
Okay, let's take it. Now let's take this. The only one that can play for a win is me. As long as I keep my bishop. Um, what is what is happening? Uh, I've misplayed this. Okay, let's go here. That's attacking the rook, right? Yeah, it is. Taking a five is desired. Okay, push. Push. Bishop g5 is there. Watch out. Wait, what? That's losing. That's losing right away. Right? What's the trick? There we go. So I think that in this kind of format, the longer the game goes, the more difficult it's going to be for me to, um, to survive the game, ultimately. Um, I thought I thought here, of course, that I, I, like I was running out of time. I felt like I had something in the position, but simply I didn't see anything. It feels... Ah, I like my position. It's a, it's a little bit of a shame. Probably Queen d2 is winning. Um, but yeah, uh, I went for this. I think it's important to find this bishop b2 tactic. And believe it or not, I, maybe I, I wouldn't have found that tactic if I was looking at the pieces. Because, as I said, the board in my mind is just everywhere. I can. I feel like I can. I can see everything rather than looking at a physical board in real life. And uh, um, maybe, maybe, maybe I can't uh, look at the whole board in in, in a physical board. Um, hope that was instructive. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you think I should play maybe slower time controls, faster time controls. I'm, I'm very interested and curious to see what your opinion on this is. is. Hope it was useful and as always, have a nice day.